We are ANN, and this is Planet Talk. Today the new moon in Virgo falls on the Mars-Neptune opposition, with Mars in Virgo and Neptune in Pisces. And this is occurring against the larger backdrop of the Saturn-Uranus square. Now, the themes of the Saturn-Uranus square are themes of tension and breakage, of authority versus liberation, of uh, tradition versus progress, and, and so on. And everything that we're experiencing in the news, whether it's got to do with climate change, whether it's got to do with politics, uh, whether it's got to do with what's going on in Afghanistan, bears the marks of the Saturn-Uranus, uh, Saturn-Uranus square. And what happens when something like Mars opposite Neptune occurs is that that further inflects the themes that are already there given to us by the longer passage of Saturn square Uranus, and it inflects it in the direction of Mars Neptune. So let's talk about Mars Neptune and what we get with that. Now this aspect has been building up over the last you know, two or three weeks over the latter half of, uh, of August and it will and, and it went exact I believe on September 3rd and then it's going to taper off through the first half of September and it brings together the hard active pointed qualities of Mars with the subtle diffuse dissolving imaginative uh, qualities of, of Neptune. And so you see that it's a very, uh, very intense meeting of the yang and the yin with Mars Neptune. And it can work in a number of ways. You know, one of the really common ways that it works is that Neptune kind of undermines and dissolves away our uh, capacity for focused effort and action. Um, you know, Mars is just our physical energy on one level and Neptune is kind of vague and foggy and you don't know where it comes from and it has this way sometimes of sapping our energy of just kind of leaking it away and it can be a quality like like uh, Ren has spoken about before of like uh, wet spark plugs okay and this is one of the nastier dimensions of this aspect uh, another nasty side of Mars Neptune can be um, you know, aggression, Mars, but passive. So, so passive aggression on the one hand, right? Because Neptune's passive, but also subtle and uh, deceptive and, um, you know, the way that it mixes together with martial aggression can become a kind of toxic, um, you know, icky, manipulative kind of thing because Neptune... You know, Neptune's about the imagination, about Maya, about illusion, and so it can be very deceptive. And so when you put that together, you know, if you've ever seen the movie Ghost, um, the, the, I forget the name of the actor who plays the bad guy in that, but, you know, he's basically pretending to be Demi Moore's friend and, you know, always so concerned about about how she's doing in the wake of uh, Patrick Swayze's death, but meanwhile, he's the guy who set it up and had him killed. Um, it, it, anyway, he's got a Mars-Neptune um, uh, aspect, and, uh, and that's one of the uglier sides of, of the Mars-Neptune. Now, if you've got a Mars-Neptune aspect in your chart, I'm not saying that you're like a creepy, gaslighting, manipulative, you know, toxic, horrible person. <laughs> that's just one expression of it. Um, but when we experience these aspects collectively, right, we get the whole range. And, um, you know, anything that involves larger numbers of people, uh, man, there's some great quote by Jung about this, but basically that the, the more collective something is, the lower level of evolution it, it, can, it can display. So basically we get the lowest common denominator. All right, so we're bound to experience some of that ickiness on, on a large scale. Um, uh, so let's, let's see how it's been working in the news. Um, well, one very more concrete 
way, I guess, is with Hurricane Ida, right? So violent, aggressive forces, right? And we're actually getting, getting this, too, from Mars trying Pluto, which is going on right now. So extreme, violent, catastrophic natural forces, right? This is something that comes in through Pluto and is intensified with the direction of Mars. Um, but forces of water, right? It's been flooding, uh, you know, this flooding that's just like devastated the Northeast and killed a bunch of people. Um, flooding, water is all a Neptune kind of a thing. And so the violence of nature uh, through the medium of water is very much this kind of Mars, uh, Pluto, Mars, Neptune sort of a thing. Now, if we switch over and look at the Taliban, right? Um, first of all, we can see how there's a Saturn Uranus thing going on there with how the fact that America's exit, where we were just kind of, we had been propping up, uh, you know, a government, a whole, a whole system for the last 20 years, and then we walk away, boom, it collapses, and then phew, the, the whole old system comes right back in. And um, there we can see the Saturn Uranus quality of, um, well, of sudden breakage, of authority and system and structure, America versus the, the rebels that, that want to get back in. But those rebels also have a Saturnian quality, right? They are uh, hardcore, traditional, fundamental, fundamentalist, religious people that want to enforce a strict kind of uh, Islamic law society, which is very Saturn. Okay, so the, you always get these weird, ironic, uh, oxymoronic combinations very often with, with Saturn and Uranus. So there's that, but then the Mars-Neptune angle, okay, to bring in. So let me come back to that. So Mars, violence, guns, war. You know, that this is all Mars stuff, right? And Neptune is very connected with the image and the media because the media is the you know main propagator of, of the images that kind of, uh, you know, fill in the collective psyche and color how we view the world. So one thing I've noticed, you, you know, over the last year or so, anytime there's been a Mars-Neptune alignment, there have been particularly notable uh, images in the news ar about around guns, you know, around gun violence, mass shootings, and so forth. And now, with the opposition, we're getting something really, really big, which has to do with, of course, the war that, that America's been in for the last 20 years, right? And so images of war, images of men on guns, or men with guns, you know, on vehicles, like coming in and and storming the, the, you know, Kabul and, and people desperately trying to flee and, uh, you know, hanging on to airplanes, trying to, trying to leave and all of that. It, there are images, you know, violent images, images of war uh, coming into the psyche, right? And then another aspect of it is the sense that, you know, all this time, in Afghanistan and and really like throughout uh, throughout the region um, we've been you know the West has been trying to keep a very tight lid and tight control on a situation where there's this kind of dissolved immersed quality of um, you know elements in the society that that you, you know don't want to be controlled and that are kind of like laying in light latent potential right it's like the taliban never went anywhere the taliban was always ready to just kind of seep back into control once we left and so without without that kind of hard rigid control that we put on the situation the opportunity for this kind of latent almost cancer-like situation to just come out of remission it's just like phew, through the whole system at once. So that's another Neptune quality. And of course, with the Mars, you know, violent, aggressive uh, way. One final thing I want to say about Mars, Neptune, and a piece of advice that I could give is that it really calls for the idea of Wu Wei 
which is the Taoist concept of effortless action. You know, here we sort of step out of the way, even when we're in the middle of activity and, and doing things, right? We get our small self out of the way and almost ask ourselves, who is the doer right now? You know, is it the little me trying to force an agenda? In which case, with Mars Neptune, that we open ourselves easily to either pollution or toxicity from the outside, whether it's people manipulating us, people undermining us, or from the inside, either we're manipulating and undermining other people, or we're manip or we're, we're undermining ourselves, or we have a kind of energy leakage situation go on. So it's very important to quiet down to find a still center from which to act. And, um, and that's, you know, really the best that we can do with this aspect. And the highest expression of it is like that of the martial artist, right? Or the Taoist sage kind of surfing the currents of the universal flow. And the spiritual warrior, you know, somebody who can, who can fight uh, and act, you know, with, with plenty of force and strength, but from a, a place of being tapped into something higher. And it's very easy to deceive ourselves about all of this where Neptune is concerned, which is why it's so important to always be engaging in inner work of some kind, whether it's meditation, whether it's regular uh, psychedelic sessions. But we want to be always cleaning ourselves out of the the toxic sludge and clarifying our perspective, right? So that we really know whether or not we are aligning with something or we're BSing ourselves. So with that, I will leave you. Thank you.